Shalom, Rastafari. Hope that I then received the day of Yom Kippur in the Christ mind way, the Hamushia mind way, in the spirit and the truth of Yeshua Hamushia, being I and I, being I and I atonement in spirit and in truth and glory in the word, because it's that word as life to I and I. So pray for wisdom and let's pray for um, overstanding. Pray for the Holy Spirit, for the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit to be outpoured on I and I and I, and so that we would have have a heart and a mind to to seek Him, to turn to Him. Right, that's the whole meaning of the season. Right, and now we're going into these uh, like four or five days as we are now approaching the Sukkot, the ingathering, the dwelling. Right, for that atonement to dwell in us. Right, as he says, his word, for his word to abide in us. What I wanted to touch on, brothers and sisters and, and mothers, is a little bit, let's go a little bit deeper, right? Because as we study, the more we study, there's, there's a lot of ideas that surround the whole message of, of Christ or of those who come in his name, of Jesus Christ. So, so many things we've heard, so many things we've been led to believe sincerely by people who sincerely, no doubt, believe what they have led us to believe. But what is the real um, meaning of the season, right? According to the word, right? Because it's that word that becomes flesh. It's that word that supernaturally, when I say supernaturally, don't get spookism in mind. It means above that which is the natural, Right, we our breath, for example, right, um, 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 our consciousness, right. It's not limited to the natural, but in being soul bound, bound to this world, being conformed to this world, the spiritual things such as the cross seems like foolishness, as the great apostle Hawaria Paulos, as he preached, the apostle Paul preached about the cross. For those who are perishing, it's foolishness because they lack that knowledge. My people perish because of a lack of knowledge. So let's go a little bit deeper and let's overstand, um, begin to comprehend a little bit more on this season by studying some of the elementals. Now, what I want to do is just uh, crop this picture right here, right? Because this picture is going to be important as we go forward, right? And... Uh, and let's bring this forward, right? Some of the basics from the scripture. Now, this right here basically shows the role of um, of priest, right? Of priest, of prophet, and of king. So we have the priest, the role of the priest, right? And the high priest is the Kahin Ha Gadol, right? Or what's known as the Lika Kahinat. Let's just place this picture over here until we're ready to uh, utilize it. So let's touch on um, Ainaz Rastafari talk about priest, prophet, and king. All right, there's a groundation, right? There's a groundation for the role of priest, prophet, and king. And it's all scriptural. This is why Hala Selassie saith, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So the first aspect we need to better understand is what is priest, prophet, and king? All right, priest, prophet, and king. Now, many of us, as Rastafari, no doubt, have heard this expression, priest, prophet, and king. And no doubt, we have taken some glory in, in the ideas in which priest, prophet, and king seem and appear to us based on our knowledge of the glory his majesty tells us what his glory is. His glory is the B-I-B-L-E. So it would behoove I and I to study, right? And to and to pray for the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kadesh, the Ayla Ayrit, the spirit of truth and of wisdom, so we can glory within his glory and abide in his glory. Amen. Amen. So here we have the black Christ, priest, king, and the sacrifice. We can look at this as the black Christ, we see the black Christ, 
is because of the lie against his humanity, against his flesh, against him coming in the flesh, right? Coming in that flesh of a, of a, of a black man, or we could say Ethiopian, right? This man was born there. Now let's go forward in the scripture. Okay, it says that he fulfills all things concerning, right? Fulfilling those things concerning the things written concerning him. So on priest, prophet, and king. The Holy Spirit wants me to touch on this even as a reminder to I and I. What are the, the trinity of roles, right? Of priest, prophet, and king. And who really is priest, prophet, and king in fullness according to the glory of his majesty, according to the glory of Ketamawi Haile Selassie. So this, this is mainly to I and I Rastafari brothers and sisters and those interested in a true proclamation Right? And I say true because that's our intent and we are being obedient to his word, to his good news, to the gospel, right? The good news. And I and I is not ashamed of that as many of I and I, you know, brothers have because of, you know, counterfeit. Because of the counterfeit, many of us neglect to speak of the the, the truth, right? You know, because of all the counterfeit, the whitewash, when we say Jesus or Jesus Christ, most people, they imagine the false and it takes time to persuade them if it be possible, if Abba Father, if Ha Elohim give them um, peradventure, would give them repentance so they can acknowledge the truth, right? But whether they hear or they forbear, we must be obedient to his, to his word. Right? As, as true children, born of his seed, right? born of his word. So we have the priest, prophet, and king um, functions. Right? The priest, prophet, and king. Right? Very important. So what, what, what's the first we had? We first had the priest role. The priest, the high priest. Right? And who is the high priest? It's the Kahin HaGadol. Now this uh, season, uh, Yom Kippur, when we look at it in the Torah, there must be a high priest. In order for Yom Kippur to be truly Yom Kippur, according to his word, in spirit and in truth, there must be a high priest. I, and I know that enough man of mine in, in different, you know, in different uh, mansions, if we can call them that among different houses and some of the Ayabingi will say this one is I priest and that one is I priest and so forth and so on but I and I priest according to the glory of the king of kings is Yeshua HaMoshiach is Jesus Christos so if we carry that name Rastafari do we carry it legitimately according to the the, the law of his spirit the law of truth the Torah of truth. So our high priest, the real high priest, the true high priest, according to the glory of his majesty, is Yeshua HaMoshiach, is Jesus Christos. And for the Yom Kippur, one of the readings for that day, but it's also a reading good for any day and every day, is, is the epistle to the Ibrawiyan, or the Ibrawiyan, or the epistle to the Hebrews, Hebrews. Because Hebrews explains to us as black Hebrews, as Ethiopian Hebrews, redeemed Beta Ethiopian Hebrew Israelites, it explains to I and I exactly what Yeshua HaMoshiach fulfilled. <laughs> oh, hold on for a moment right here. Oh, playing a little bit of Augustus Pablo. I hope they don't tag the video for that. You know how it goes sometimes, but let's move forward still. All right, so we want to touch a little bit more on the role. What is the role of the high priest? So we can see and know for ourselves in spirit, right, in the word, in the spirit, and in the truth of what Yeshua fulfilled. What did he accomplish? When they say that, well, Christ, yes, was Christos, Gitach, and he fulfilled the Old Testament types. Right? He fulfilled the law. He fulfilled that Torah concerning our, our uh, remission of sin, our atonement. He is that perfect atonement because he is the lamb. Right? He is the lamb. Right? The set ha 
Elohim. Now, here they have Easter, Easter lamb, or our Passover lamb. That's a good question. Is Yeshua our Easter lamb or our Passover lamb? <laughs> That's a good one right there. All right, but let's move forward in speaking of the role of the high priest. All right, so what is the role? All right, we'll put this over here too for a moment. What is the role of the high priest? So we're going to refer liberally to um, to the Hebrew for Christians, right? Because coming from a Judaic, you know, I want to say Judaic, coming from a scriptural perspective, um, there's a lot of uh, line on line, precept on precept, and line on line, and here a little and there a little. In other words, in that sense of the Hebrew systemic, even though some other, you know, latter day Jewish things creep in, but the Holy Spirit will show you what's what. Because you see what matches scripture and what seems as though it's like what's man's thinking, right? And what is our Father's thinking. So, Overall, we think it's a good uh, point of reference. So we know that Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, right? The Day of Atonement, one of the holiest days in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew year or the Shana, and it provides for I and I a prophetic, right? Insight, right? There's a prophetic insight regarding the Moshiach. Some say the Second Coming. Right. But we ask whether ones have missed that. And it's now it's judgment time. Now, the restoration of national Israel or black Israel, the black Hebrews, the Ethiopian Hebrews are redeemed. The key word redeemed. That's what the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is all about. And it's also about the final judgment of the world, the final judgment of Babylon, of Baal's system. It is also a day that reveals, and here's the revelation, it reveals the high priestly work of Yeshua. What is that high priestly work that he fulfilled as our Kohen or Kahen Gadol or Kahen Ha Gadol, the high priest, after, and here's the key, the order of Malkia Sedek or Melchizedek. Sedek. Now, who is Melchizedek? Well, first of all, what does Melchizedek mean? Right? It means the king of righteousness or my king. Right? My king is righteousness. Now, we know that Melchizedek, right? When we speak about after the order of Melchizedek. And all this is very important, Rastafari brothers, because we've been asking and reasoning among ourselves of, okay, we hear the call to the order of Melchizedek. But what is truly the order of Melchizedek, according to the glory of I and I Abba, I and I Father? We know he's I and I Father because his name is upon us. His seed, his word must be in us. And he says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So let's study this right here when we're going to speak on Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. So the connection here with Yeshua is that Yeshua, right, yes, is is the Kahin Ha Gadol or the Kohen Gadol after the order of Melchizedek? Now, if we go through the terminology of Yom Kippur, right? Actually, when you look into the Torah, right, it's written Yom Ha Kippurim, which is interesting. Yom Ha Kippurim. So the Yad Mim at the end, instead of Kippur, Kippurim makes it plural. And some say that it might be because the purification process, it cleansed from a multitude of transgressions, right? It was like, it, it was like a, um, um, a multitude cleansing, cleansing many transgressions, iniquities, and chatiyat, and, and sin, and sins, and wrongdoings. However, the name also, when you study the Hebrew, it alludes to two uh, great atonements. There are two great atonements. So we say Yom Kippur in the singular sense, but if we would look at the Hebrew in the Torah, it's Yom Ha Kippurim. Ha is the, right? The day of the, um, the atonements, right? So here's, here's the dual, right? The duality, right? That individual, in the, 
vidduo, right? That duality here. There's two great atonements that are given by Yod Hey, Wahe, Yahweh. The first for those among the nations, right? First is among those among the Gentiles or the nations who turn to Yeshua in spirit and in truth for cleansing and forgiveness. And the second is for the purification of the ethnic. When we say the ethnic, the racial or the black Israel, the Ethiopian Hebrew, the redeemed Beta Ethiopian Hebrew Israelite tribe nation during Yom Adonai. Now, Yom Adonai is the great day of the Lord, the Yom Adonai or Ha Adonai, which is at the end of days or at the end of time. Right? What we call time, what we know as time, is relative to the orderly progressions of the heavens. So if something or rather someone were to throw the heavens out of balance as it says when the heavens rolled up like a scroll then truly we would be at the yom adonai or the day of the lord amen all right okay so may yah strengthen i and i i tell step all right now kippurim um, can be read. Some people say when you look at the look at the Hebrew as Yom Kippurim, Kippurim, or a day that's like Purim, that was a day of deliverance and salvation. That's explained in the book of Aster, the Metzhafe Aster, or the book of Esther. Now, thus the day on which Yeshua he sacrificed, he gave himself on the Meskel, on the wood of the cross, is the greatest Purim. Right? Or a day of deliverance of all, since it is through him we are eternally saved, preserved from the hands of all I and I enemies. Now, when we look into the Torah, right, the scriptures, especially the first five books, it states that Yom Kippur, Ha Kippur, was the only time when the high priest or the Lik uh, Kahinat, the Kahin Ha Gadol, the Ibraist, right, could enter the Holy of Holies, right, the Holy of Holies, which is like the inner sanctum, and call upon the name of Yod He Wehe, and call upon the name of Yahweh, right, to offer blood sacrifice, right, for the Chat Yat, for the sin nature of the people, of the chosen people. Now, this is based on a principle that is known as life for a life, right? This is the Old Testament, an Old Covenant principle, life for life, and it's the foundation of what is known as the sacrificial system, one of the most ancient, prime, primitive systems in humanity, which are, is only properly explained by the Hebrew scriptures, even though many other cultures have reflections upon that, but we can see it truly in its right context, right? Through Moses, because of the Almighty's intimacy with Israel. It's only Israel that he has known of all peoples. So he has revealed the fullness of this sacrificial system to I and I through the scriptures and through the word, right? And it marked the great day of intercession, right? Th this day is a great day of intercession, which is made by way of the high priest, right, on behalf of Kol Israel, of the Beta Israel at home and abroad. Now, there are different, like, traditions, you know, in traditional modern Judaism. And in modern Judaism, the day of Yom Kippur, it marks the climax of the 10 day period that's known as the 10 days of repentance. Right, or the Yamim Norayim, the days of awe, right? And according to certain ancient uh, Judaish and Jewish sages on Rosh Hashanah, the destiny of the Tzadikan or the Tzadikim are written in the Book of Life, right? The Sefer Chayim, Ha Chayim, and the destiny of the wicked or the Reshayim are written in the Book of Death. So there's that distinguishment right there. However, most people, right, will not be inscribed in either book, but have 10 days, right? And these 10 days, right, would be the 10 days leading to 
um, Yom Kippur. Now, this is this was the understanding, right, that was more after the the Second Temple period, but it goes in tune. Even though it's coming from like Jewish sages, it's very much in tune with the spirit of the word. We don't find anything there that offends the basic spirit of the word. So let's go on right there. So they have the these 10 days to repent before sealing their fate. Because we know that these are types and shadows. Alos. He explains to us that these are all considered to be types and shadows of things to come. Of what would happen in the latter days. This is why it's good to remember these things and to study these things and to learn in the context of, of our salvation of Yeshua, how, what he fulfilled, right? Because very, very important. M much will be revealed once you begin to have those first principles, right? Which are the first principles of the oracles of God, of Ha'elohim, Baruchu, which is Torah, right? Hence the term Aseret Yeme Teshuvah, Right, the ten days of repentance. That's where we get that particular term, Aseret Yeme Teshuva or Teshuba, right? Ten days of repentance on Yom Kippur, then every soul, right, every soul's name will be sealed in one of the two books. For this reason, Yom Kippur, Yom Ha Kippurim, is really the climax of what is known as the forty day season. Right, it's a 40-day season of teshuva. Now, some might regard that as a fast, so forth and so on. So we're going to deal with this part in part one to basically understand, well, what is this day? Now, some say that man was created for the sake of teshuva, right? the sake of repentance. Yom Kippur, the day of at one meant. Right? We go a little deeper than that because we have at one man. And the T is the cross. So we have at one man tau, at one man's cross. And now at this particular point, right, we can bring this forward, right, at one man's cross, right, at one man's cross right here, right, at one man's cross, at Christ's cross, right, the finding, right, the finding of the true cross, so we see how all of these spiritually and, and even contextually link one with the next and reveals his word without any um, need for additions. We can just see how it, how it connects, even the at one man, at one man tau, at one man's cross, at one man's mark, that mark of Christ, right? That mark of holiness, right? That mark of exemption too, when you look at it in terms of Ezekiel chapter 9, and that mark that was upon those in Jerusalem who are speared of that destruction. So we see a type of the last or, or, or the last day, the final judgment or the last the end times, as it's called. Right. So this is considered right, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the holiest day of the year. And it's also called Yom HaKadosh, right? Yom HaKadosh. Right, Yom Hak Adosh, or the day of the holy, or the day of the holy one. Now, who is the Kadosh? Well, be, behold the Lamb, right? right? Behold the Lamb of God, right? Who take away the sins of the world. Behold him, behold the Lamb, right? So now Yeshua HaMoshiach, he has a, a dual role, right? First is as that Lamb of the Father, right? And then after ascension is as I and I high priest where he offered his own blood as the lamb in the true type, in the holiest of the holies, in the true type, in the heavenly tabernacle. Remember, Moses made the tabernacle on earth after the pattern. And this is from the old, you know, Berit Hashanah or the Old Testament that we find this after the pattern, which he saw. Right, which he was given the um, privilege to see, right, that he saw in the Shemaim, in the heavens. So these are real things we're speaking about, although some people would say, oh, it sounds like, but the more man is learning about his world and his universe, we're, we're finding that 
um, the truth actually is, is stranger, at least from our Western Gentile way of thinking, right? Is stranger, right? Than fiction, right? Um, and we find that fiction, in a sense, kind of pales by comparison and they're holding back some things. But it's the truth that we find here that is, that is real. Now, on Hebrew, on the Hebrew calendar, Erev Yom Kippur begins, right, at nightfall on Tishri 9 and continues 25 hours through the next day until nightfall. It is a solemn day, according to some traditions of keeping this day, that's marked by complete fasting, prayer, and additional synagogue services. So among the modern day Jews in Judaism, Right, this is how they keep it. But there's a revelation that was shown to I, and I shared that with I and I on Wendemoch with the brothers and sisters and others. It was somewhat late when the revelation came to I when I received it, but it was about Yom Kippur, whether to fast or not to fast. See, this all depends on who is your high priest and what is his sacrifice, you know, what is that lamb? In other words, what is that sacrifice that he giveth? The overs? Now, let, now let's go forward right here. We're going to get to that. We're going to touch on that right here. Now, according to, we're going to pass over some of the Jewish uh, sages right here, right? Because that was for that time, since we are that seed people, right? Now, um, Right, okay, uh, stricken from the book which you have written. Now, Moses also talked about the book, right? Um, because uh, for 40 days, you know, Moses was upon the mountain. He received the second set of, of tablets, mm -hmm. of Hebrew hieroglyphic tablets Moses received on the mount, right? Because they were written in stone. If you study what hieroglyphs mean, that, they, that would fit at the two tablets. They were Hebrew. Right, Ebrawiyan or Hebrew hieroglyphic tablets. Now here we also find the first the first mention, even the first inkling, right? The first ink on the page, right, of the book of life. Right? And there's a Rosh Hashanah connection here. It's when Musa or Moses he asked to be stricken from the book you have written. Right? Now this is this is in Exodus chapter thirty two, verses thirty two to thirty three. Moses, he asked to be stricken from the book, right, which the Almighty had written, right, if Ha Elohim Eloheinu would not make an atonement for his people, right, because those people, remember the people, the Israelites, it was murmuring, complaining, just like, just like N words today, you know what I mean, because it's the same people, right, it's, it's the very same people. Others can behold that in spite of their cursedness that the Almighty is is, is exceedingly merciful, right, with the so-called Negroes, right, with the so-called uh, so called Hispanics, right, and, and the Native American and now other brothers, Ethiopian Hebrew brothers and sisters scattered around the world have been so merciful with I and I, but we still don't get it. We don't get who we are. We reject our identity, no doubt because of the response ability, the ability to respond, the Day of Atonement. There's a responsibility to turn to him. Not to stay turned away from him, turn to his spirit, turn to the truth of the word, study the word, right? To, to grow in grace. Now, the willingness of Moses to be stricken from the book is interesting, right? He wanted to be stricken from the book on the people's behalf. And although Moses, and we can see, um, we can see the priest right here as a type, right? As a type of Moses, we need to understand the types and the so-called anti-types, right, in the scripture, right? What are the types and the anti-types and what does this mean? That here we have Moses, right? Here we have Moses, right, as a type, right, as a type of, of Yeshua, right? He's mediating in the role of Yeshua on behalf of the people, right? This is what we have in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15, is another important uh, verse that gives you more on what I just said right here. So take that down and please be sure to, to look that up as well, right? So in moving forward, we can have a, a better firmness in, 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 the, in the word of truth. Now, what's the meaning of the word Kippur, right? Now, the Day of Atonement 
is the English phrase for Yom Kippur. Now, the, the root, right, for the word Kippur or the Shoresh, right, the Shoresh or the root of the word Kippur is Kafar or Kapar, Kafar, right, Kafar, Kafir boy, anyone? which probably, they say right here, derives from the word kofar. Now, we've connected that by studying the, the Afro-Shemitic, the Amharic, as well as the Ge'ez, the pure Shemitic, the Ge'ez or the Ethiopic, and we can see that it's more to mean to cover, but in this sense, a ransom, right? Now, this word is, 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 is parallel to the word redeem, right? It's also used in the sense of redeem, Psalm 49 and 7. And means to atone, right? To make one, to bring together one by offering a substitute, something in substitute for. Now, the majority of usages that we have of this word within the scriptures, the Old Testament, the Brit Hashanah, usually concerned with making an at one man tau, right? At Alpha Omega Alef Tav at one man, one man, Yeshua, at his tav, right? At his tav or at his cross, right? At the cross of one man, right? At the substitute of one man, right? But the making of atonement, right? According to the priestly or the Levitical ritual was a sprinkling of the sacrificial, the sacrificial blood to remove the chat or the or the sin or defilement Right, the, the tahora, right, to, to, to cleanse it, right, the cleansing. Now, the life blood of the sacrificial animal was, was required, right, in exchange for the life blood of the worshipper, the one who is worshipping, the worshipper, right? The symbolic expression of innocent life given, right, for guilty life. Now, a lot of folks will have a lot of issues with that. But let's first of all understand the system, understand what is real. This is, this is real right here. But this system of the animals, right, was done away with in Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, people will say, well, they can find certain prophetic scriptures that when the priesthood is once again restored and the temple is all going to keep going as it was before. That's, that's an oversimplification right there. But there's some good points um, in one particular vid that we've seen, um, can we fulfill the, the the feast today? I think it was like, can we still fulfill the feast? I have to get the, I think it's Joel. Pretty good channel, all the same. And I would recommend that there. And give thanks for that, for that work, you know, putting out the truth. But the symbolism in the expression of the innocent life given for the guilty life, the symbolism is further clarified by the action of the worshiper, right? There's an action of the worshiper. Right? And we find that the Hebrew, when we really get to our Hebrew root, right, it's one concerning action. Right? It's one concerning action. Right? What action are we speaking about? All right, Stay tuned. Coming up in the part two of this, we're going to get a little bit more into what is the action. So we have the action right, of the high priest, but there's also a response. Right? There's a responsibility.